Let's take a look at the video player that is provided within Studio One 3. In order to access the video player, we can click the icon here that looks like a film strip. By clicking once, we now have our video player open. We can click the plus sign here to import a video, but I'm actually going to close out and just come to my Explorer window. If you're on the Mac, you can use a Finder. And I'll go ahead and you can click and drag your video in. If you hold down control while dragging, this will only extract the audio from the video and place it into Studio One. If you hold Alt while dragging, this will import the video to Studio One while also extracting the audio from the video file and placing it on an audio track. Now before importing a video, you actually want to be sure that you have your frame rate set properly. So we can click on the uh, sample right here and then come to the frame rate area and choose from a variety of different ones. I'm going to choose 24. This is actually what the original video is that was recorded on the camera, but it was actually re-rendered down, so I'm not sure if that's accurate, but that's the original frame rate. So I'll click OK, come back to my Explorer, and this is the file I went, so I will go ahead and drag it in. Minimize that. And before we get to the video, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the controls that are within the player here. Again, we have the import video. We can remove any currently uh, imported video that we're using. We can click this to extract the audio from the video and place that onto an audio track. Here, we can adjust our video offset, which we may need to do when we start working with this video in a second. Here, this wrench icon will give us video options for sizing, so we can choose half, default, or double size. We've got stop, play, and an icon for online, which essentially enforces a link between the video and your song. We've got a mute. This is actually usually on by default. And this is engaged by default as well. We actually have an area here where we can resize our video. And I'm actually going to take this down a bit and get this out of the way of our audio event. We then have a maximize and close. And we can, if you have a second monitor, you can also drag that to that additional monitor you have. So let's go ahead and start playback of this video and see where we are as far as our settings with timing and how these are syncing up. And actually, I'm going to move this track to the beginning. So the video is lagging a bit behind. So this is what this is for. So let me move that back. So we're almost there. Just a couple more. And I just, this song has already been mashed up so I know as it should be. I know the, the cuts in the video where they should be to the beat. So I'm adjusting this based on having done that and I think once this is synced up you'll it will make more sense so let's go ahead and start back at the beginning and see how this is turning out a 
Okay, so that's what this is for here, the video offset. This You can sync up your video to the audio that you're working with. Particularly if you just have one track and it's a audio track and all you need to do is sync up these two items together. Now if you're going to be navig navigating around within the, the timeline here and um, while it's playing back, keep in mind that a bit of data does need to be cached so the video could come out of sync. It will eventually sync up in a moment but if you want to avoid that it's best to stop adjust your locator to where you'd like to be and then play back that way. Also, if you want to set up markers for hit points in the video, uh, you want to be sure that you have cursor follows edit position turned on and then you can open up your marker track here. We can, let's see, I'll jump there and I'll add a marker there. Let's come here and I'll add a marker there. And in this way, whenever you select this marker and move it, this frame of the video is going to follow this marker. So just keep in mind that you do have that available to you. And again, you need to be sure that the uh, cursor follows edit position is enabled if you're gonna take advantage of this feature. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select these and remove them and get rid of the marker track. And actually I'll take this off as well. One last thing to keep in mind is that if you're having playback issues, particularly if you're using .mov files, you wanna be sure that you have the latest version of Studio One installed uh, because it does make use of a new video engine as uh, Apple no longer supports QuickTime for Windows if you are on a PC. So that's the last thing that you wanna keep in mind there. So, uh, with that, I think maybe I'll just go ahead and let this play back, and I'll see you in the next video.